So for the last part of, of the dev room, uh, we have uh, talks on like real-time processing, fast data, streaming, so we're switching topic again. Uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, William, and uh, he's going to talk about big data and fast data. Thank, Thank you. you. So, my name is William, I work for Pivotal. Uh, I work in the Geo Engineering or Gemfire, where it's actually the name of the commercial product that is the region of the open source project named Geo. And the idea is to talk about how uh, you can integrate a system that is really focused on, on big data, such as Replum, and operate with fast data in memory using uh, an in-memory data grid such as Geo, and then you can do the transactional workloads in Geo. but then if you need to do some machine learning or some more complex querying, then you can do that in, in Greenplum. So how can you do, how can you make this integration uh, easier, right? So when we are talking about big data, right, uh, most of the times you have a problem where you have a single system or a single process or a single machine that has to deal with a lot of data. And it's, it's a tough problem, right? So let's imagine that this guy here, he wants to somehow get all these uh, uh, balls and, and pass them through some, some tubes, right? One approach, which would be this, so parallelization is one way to do it. It works, but uh, up to a limit. And if you're still thinking that it's a single guy doing all that work, it's going to take a lot of time. So what we are trying to suggest here as an alternative is uh, something like this. So let's get a bigger pipe, right? So a mix of both is actually the, the ideal scenario. And that's what we are trying to do with this integration between the both products, right? So I'm not sure if everyone was here when the introduction to Green Plum happened, but uh, uh, a nice way, I guess, to summarize is that it's a highly distributed also uh, MPP database. There is this idea of a master node multiple master nodes and multiple segment nodes, and the data is uh, spread across all these nodes, partitioned, right? And uh, there is also uh, uh, the idea of using a specific protocol, right, called GPF dist that is also available in Greenplum, that you can then uh, import low data, right, from files or from other systems very, very, very fast. Because the protocol, right, the, the, the binary, it's, it's uh, smart enough to map all the NICs and identify all the NICs available on that machine and then map those to files or split the files if needed and then load that creating like a fake or an external temporary table, for example, and then suck the data into all the segment nodes if needed, right? So it's, it's very fast, but you are still doing that leveraging and you're still makes you be bounded, right, with the file and the I.O., the cost of I.O. that you could have to load that file from, from, from this. So we looked at this and said, okay, uh, how can we solve this problem, right? So the other project that we have at Pivotal, right, or no, it's actually an Apache project too, called Apache, called Apache Geo, is uh, uh, focused on uh, in-memory data. So you have uh, the notion of a cluster, you have multiple nodes, and we do have a lot of customers that are already using this in production, and they have a lot of uh, uh, transactional workloads, they deal with big data in memory as well. So why not leverage this other product here and integrate both? So. There is the concern, of course, about when you're dealing with data for sensitive data, like, I don't know, financial industries or, or uh, let's say, retail, right, that you don't want to lose data. So in the case of Geode, since the, the project actually started to, to uh, uh, 
work on the needs of the financial industry, right? There are like a lot of features that is already part of the project that tries to solve this problem of data loss. So for example, whenever you uh, put an entry inside the cluster, uh, you can specify the number of replicas of the data you want in the cluster. So let's say you want two replicas or three replicas. It's going to share or uh, put the, those replicas in other nodes of the cluster. And if one of these nodes fail, given the number of replicas you specify, the cluster is going to reestablish that copy the data to another node that is available, right? So it's going to keep that consistent. If you happen to have some execution that you want to do in this data in memory, right? And you can do that using plain Java code. And if that fails, you can uh, restart. So you can specify that even the function that you are executing, operating on this data, has some level failover as well. It deals with uh, network partition, so split brain scenarios. Uh, uh, it has a, a built-in uh, support for that. You just enable a flag and you have network partition detection. Uh, and it also supports uh, when replication, right? So this is very nice because one of the complaints about uh, uh, many systems or many, many customers that are using systems that doesn't have this feature is that, okay, I have this database or this system running on one uh, data center, but now I also want to have uh, 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 DR capabilities in another data center or I actually want to operate both data centers at the same time. So how can you do that? So we offer WAN replication as well. And uh, since it's in memory, right, people sometimes get scared and say, well, it's in memory. Well, what happens if the node fails or crash? Am I going to lose all the data? So although it's in memory, you can also specify this to be actually persistent on disk. And we then have uh, some smart algorithms uh, uh, to recover that data from disk. So even if your entire cluster is down, you can recover all the data from disk in a, in a, in a very easy and, and fast way. And then, of course, we do a load, load balancing for clients and whatnot. So to put that in perspective of numbers, so these are two uh, uh, use cases that we have. Uh, they're still using Pivotal Gemfire, but just for you to understand, Pivotal Gemfire got entirely donated as Apache Geo. So it's the same code base, it's the same system, works the same way. So China Rail and Indian Rail, if you actually do the math, you have here a lot of transactions, uh, concurrent users and whatnot. But another way to look at those numbers is by the population. So if you just combine here, we like to joke internally and say that, well, we are kind of responsible for 36% of the world population, like public transportation in a way. So, but at the same time, uh, people may not know about Gemfire or Geo, so that was also one of the things that started, that, that triggered the idea of sharing the code and making it open source. So that's to popularize a little bit more, right? So getting back to the original problem, right? The idea then was that we could still leverage the GPF test, but instead of loading that from uh, uh, disk, right, from files, we will just suck the data uh, from, from memory, from Apache Geo. So there is this concept of a locator, which is like a load balancer node. So through the locator, you can discover the other nodes in the cluster for Geo. So we we'll discover and say, I have four nodes here. Uh, as soon as this connection is established with all those nodes, from this point on, each segment on green plan would then start talking directly with the server here on Geo, and then hopefully that's, this is a work in progress by the way, this is still under development, we have an alpha of it, but it's kind of, it's going to evolve, but we are still working, for example, trying to solve the problem of hashing or partitioning the data here, because the way Greenplum partition data is not exactly the same way as Geo partition data, so the ideal solution would actually be if we could get to the same schema of partitioning here and really match one-to-one, uh, uh, -one, like one server on this side talking to one server on that side so they talk about the same data set, right? Uh, moving on a little bit, uh, this is an internal joke, as you might know, uh, EMC uh, got sold to Dell. Uh, so here is the scenario, right? Uh, ideally, this presentation would have a demo, so I'm not able to do that demo because of technical reasons, so there is a VM involved and whatnot, and the VM is not really behaving well. But so, imagine this scenario, right? 
So you have a, a, a credit card transaction, so sensitive money. Uh, you want to do that very fast because, of course, you don't want people waiting. You, everybody hates to waiting for the, the card transaction to actually happen. So you're going to operate and do that everything in memory and still be safe about it because it's transactional. You can do transactions in Gemfire or Geo. And that data then is going to be offloaded to Greenplum. And in Greenplum then, you can run Madlib, which is a, a data science machine learning uh, uh, open source project as well that was internally created at Pivotal, but now it's actually part of Apache and incubating too. So then you can do that, and based on the metrics and data you can collect about the historical data set in Greenplum, you can then do that and identify a possible fraudulent transaction, for example. Uh, another way to actually look at this architecture, right? So first, if you actually look at this and you say, ah, that's Pivotal Gemfire, Pivotal Greenplum, or Pivotal Cloud Foundry, right? So let's actually not do that because we're, of course, talking about open source. So everything here is open source. The solution is pretty much the same. So the demo that we built uh, and the co and source code will be available on GitHub as well. So have a, a POP simulator, so a, a POS simulator and a web console. This guy will, is going to use the uh, REST interface available on Geo to push, to send some data to Geo. Geo then is going to parallel do the distribution to Greenplum. And then in Greenplum, Madly would be running like from time to time some algorithms to calculate what's the possibility or what's the probability of having a fraud in a particular zip code, for example. <laughs> so then based on that, let's say I'm an insurance company, right, or I'm a credit card company, I can charge by uh, uh, a different uh, a different amount or have a different uh, uh, level of risk based on the zip code because I know that that zip code has more possibility of having fraud, for example, or something like that. So that can happen here, or you can have your data science team to implement a custom uh, 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 algorithm to process the data here as well, and then our web client there, which is just a, a map of the uh, United States in this case, right, will show and receive all the updates from Geo through a feature called uh, uh, event subscription, right? So instead of keeping pulling whenever I want a new data set from there, it's actually going to be just monitoring <coughs> and as, a, a, as, as soon as a, a new entry lands in Geo, that data is actually going to send push to the uh, web client, right? So here is uh, uh, an example of the UI. So I would rather actually show that live if I could, but uh, the idea is that we have like a bunch of uh, green dots popping up in the UI all the time, and whenever a transaction is identified as possible for Cradleland, it's going to be red. That, that's pretty much it. And another way to actually look at that, so here are like a collection of zip codes, and uh, the ones in red, or the bigger ones, right, are the ones that actually had more fraudulent transactions. Uh, so, we are, of course, open source, looking forward to have uh, contributions and, uh, and any comments you guys might have about the solution we are proposing for this problem, or even for other uh, uh, current pending items that we have in our Jira's, both for uh, Geo or for Greenplum. Uh, so if you're interested in Java and distributed systems, you go to Geo or C++, C++ Greenplum, although we might still be releasing a, a native client for Geo as well, so some C++ there as well too. Uh, the source code for the demo that I'm supposed to be showing here will be available on this GitHub here. And there are other demos that are available even for Geode or for uh, Greenplum. <coughs> and one quick note too is of course that we are hiring, so if you are interested in working with us in any of these projects, uh, let us know. Some links and references, and yes, grab stickers if that's your thing, like mine. Uh, thank you very much. I'm open for questions now.
the current, the major problem we are having now is with the hashing. So we are trying to understand how we can keep that consistent. Given the way we serialize data and the way we plan serialize data, we are kind of trying to match that. And also, of course, because we are Java, we are C++, there is some challenge there when we are doing some data translations and whatnot. But that's one of the things. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's doable like with time. So we'll keep working on that. Not really. We are using Spring uh, as part of the REST API, for example, in Geode. Uh, there is a Spring Data Gem fire with the Spring Data Geode project as well. So that's more of a way for a, an end user to talk and play with Geode, but uh, not really for this integration. Because we are really concerned about performance, so we are really doing like low level Java, if you may think, like avoiding. I don't know neither of those two databases, what should I compare it to? So, uh, Geode is an in-memory data grid. So, if you're familiar with, let's say, Hazelcast. Nope. Uh, coherence. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> so, Coherence, Hazelcast, Ignite, maybe, uh, Geode. So, there is a, it's a class of uh, systems that uh, they got very, very popular around 2000, 2003 or something like that. So the project, uh, the, the people to Gemfire project exists as a, like for, for 10 years already, right? And the, 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 the problem they were trying to solve was that databases were not scaling fast enough and the financial industries would like like some extra performance for, the, for their transactions. So they created this kind of class of system called in-memory data grids where you can scale and operate in a similar way as a database, but just in memory, right? But then, of course, just in memory may not be enough because what, what happens if you lose data? So then we start working with replication, distribution, and then even now persistence to disk as well. But still in a different way, in a slightly different way than a traditional database as like Green Plum or Oracle or something like that. Yeah, that that's interesting. I think that the concept of first level cache applied to big data, basically. Um, do you plan to extend that to feature like uh, you can find in MDM, in Master Data Management, to create some views on top of different tables, for instance? Do you right. plan to go in that direction? Well, we actually started working on an HDFS connector. So the same way we are uploading data to Green, to Green Plum or to disk, we will do that with uh, uh, HDFS. Uh, it's currently in a, how can I say, it's, it's paused. The source code is available. It's, in, it's part of the load already. You can already do. But we are not really including our next release. But as soon as we actually start getting more feedback, as like this would be really interesting, uh, we, we can start like work, working again on it. That's kind of we are just waiting for some feedback. That's the same thing, for example, for Spark. We have a Spark connector as well for Geo, and it's considered a bad state right now. We are just waiting for some feedback on it so we can kind of recover and start like iterating more and enhancing. <coughs> But that's not the one thing. <clears throat> and would Geo be suitable for graphs and for time series data as well? or For time series, definitely. For graphs, I guess, I mean, we don't really support, don't have any native support for uh, DAGs or anything like that yet. So that would be kind of something that, let, let's say, if we have the, 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 the integration with Spark, I would definitely let that happen in the Spark side. You just consume the data from, from, from Geo or something like that.